man, this reminded me of the story of the woman in the Bible that had the 12 years issue of blood. Man, she was bleeding for 12 years, man. So this was a hemorrhage she had where blood was being extracted or blood was flowing from a broken vessel. Man, check that out. Blood was flowing from a broken vessel. That's what a hemorrhage is. Now, as a child, as a young child, man, I I, well, I heard this story before, but I automatically thought, man, she had issues with her menstrual cycle, with her period, and she was bleeding continuously in that area for 12 years. And that could be the case, but you can have a broken vessel elsewhere also. But the key thing is the vessel, man, the vessel, that's the key, and the vessel was broken on a physical sense it was broken and, and can you imagine man the turmoil the 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 shunning the ostracizing she went through because of this blood flowing from this broken vessel wherever it was coming from no one wants to be around blood so she was deemed as tainted she was deemed as tainted and anything she touched was tainted unclean that's how she was deemed. So I'm sure, man, she didn't really want to be around people, didn't want to be around crowds, family, friends, probably lost a lot of them. But what she did have that many of us don't have is faith. Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Welcome to a Toast to the Men Network with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Hit that like button, toasters. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Go ahead and share the content. And when this video ends, go to a toast to the men dot com at the bottom there. Wow, toasters, last week, I was speaking to a young brother, young friend, young homie of mine. And I won't get into the entire conversation. I'll just focus on the meat and potatoes, the nuts and bolts of the conversation, the lesson that can pull it out, be pulled out of this conversation. But the young brother was trying to warn me, forewarning me about a gentleman I need to be wary of or cautious of about befriending, a gentleman he noticed that was following me, commenting on uh, some of my posts. And uh, I listened to the young brother. I listened to the homie. Uh, but, you know, I can't pass judgment or cut off someone or disconnect from someone or, or not befriend someone because of the experience of someone else. That's just how I've always been. Now, I am putting it in my mental Rolodex, right? I am aware. But just like in boxing matches, styles make fights in life. Styles make friendships, styles make enemies. You know, I may not get along with someone, someone may not get along with me, but you two could be or end up being the best of friends. That's just how it works, man. Maybe our personalities don't mesh or the trek we're on just doesn't mesh, and that's okay. Uh, but I just try to keep an objective, open mind, you know, regardless of, of what I hear, uh, because I'm sure things have been said about me in my lifetime. And it's probably stopped people from connecting with me or they probably had an open mind like me and say, wait, let me let me uh, get to know this brother for myself. And, and that's not saying either party is wrong. Sometimes, like I said, personalities, you know, or missions or purposes just don't mesh well. It happens. But the brother was telling me uh, that he wanted to warn me because the situation he had with this gentleman ended up being a toxic one. And they started off, I guess, as mentor, mentee. But soon after, you know, my young homie realized that, you know, this, this brother had other motives. And this is from his perspective, that this brother had other, other motives. And uh, he noticed that he would rarely congratulate him, rarely uh, lift him up, encourage him. But it was a lot of criticism, harsh criticism. And not only that, he would try to shame him in front of others. Uh, really, really try to uh, minimize or marginalize his impact in the world. Now, 
they hit it off on an artistic level. You know, my young homie is a writer, a prolific writer, gifted, gifted writer. He's one of the few brothers uh, whose writings I can really read from beginning to end. I just like the way he aligns words, put, puts words together. I love his perspective. You know, whether I agree or not, I love the way he articulates his perspective. Man, that, that's is genius, man. Very, very, very talented brother. So my young brother just finally realized after they bumped heads several times and he felt shunned and disrespected quite a few times that, hey, I need to disconnect from this brother, you know, and that's what he did. Uh, now, he felt like this brother eventually started stalking him, you know, uh, you know, shadowing him. You know, that's his perspective. But, you know, from from the meat of what he was telling me, you know, from his perspective, my response was that, you know, sometimes people can see your gift, uh, see your talent, see your purpose, your trajectory, but you don't see it. You don't see the value in what you have. You don't know how gifted you are, but they see it. But they also see the uncertainty in you. They also see the insecurity in you. And they won't acknowledge your gift. They won't acknowledge your genius. They won't acknowledge the value, the high value you have. But they'll exploit your insecurity. They'll exploit your uncertainty about your place in this world because they see your gift, they see your power. And some people just don't want that to shine. They just don't for their own reasons, they don't. But however we treat people, whatever way we treat people, man, that is truly a, 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 a reflection of us. How I see myself is how I'm gonna treat you. You know, how I uplift myself is how I'm gonna uplift you. And so we are one you are a reflection of me. However I treat you, that's a reflection of me and vice versa. But in my young brother telling me this story, man, it just reminded me that a lot of us would not acknowledge each other. We don't value each other because we won't even acknowledge ourselves. We won't acknowledge our greatness. Now we'll acknowledge ourselves on a flesh level, on a carnal level, on a superficial level, but we won't acknowledge a higher self, the higher self of us, you know, the exhausted self, the spiritual self. We won't really acknowledge that. We won't value that, but we'll put value on some superficial stuff. And that's a lot of us. I've done it. I've been guilty of it also. But when we start really acknowledging our higher self, we can see the higher selves of others. We can see the God in others. Man, all of us are vessels. We're vessels of God. We're perspectives of God. We create our God. You would not find two people that have the same viewpoint, the exact same viewpoint of God, because we create our God. However you see God is really a reflection how you see yourself or what you think you're worthy of. But we're all vessels, we're vessels and what do vessels do? They hold things, man. We're vessels of the spirit. We're vessels of God. We're vessels of the responsibility, man, to really treat each other, each other righteously, treat ourselves well, spread light, enlightenment, love, peace. But we can't do that if our vessels are broken. If they've been broken, man, we got to mend them. We got to we got to become whole. And the only way we can do that, man, is our higher self acknowledging our lower self and vice versa, man. We got to connect those two worlds, those two platforms, those two beings. We got to connect those, the conscious world with the subconscious world. And then we'll know who we truly are. And I can treat you in the way you're supposed to be treated, man, like my brother, like my sister. Man, this reminded me of the story of the woman in the Bible that had the 12 years issue of blood. Man, she was bleeding for 12 years, man. So this was a hemorrhage she had where blood was being extracted or blood was flowing from a broken vessel. 
man, check that out. Blood was flowing from a broken vessel. That's what a hemorrhage is. Now, as a child, as a young child, man, I, I, well, I heard this story before, but I automatically thought, man, she had issues with her menstrual cycle, with her period, and she was bleeding continuously in that area for 12 years. And that could be the case, but you can have a broken vessel elsewhere also. But the key thing is the vessel, man, the vessel, that's the key. And the vessel was broken on a physical sense. It was broken. And, and can you imagine, man, the turmoil, the, the, the shunning, the ostracizing she went through because of this blood flowing from this broken vessel, wherever it was coming from. No one wants to be around blood. So she was deemed as tainted. She was deemed as tainted and anything she touched was tainted, unclean. That's how she was deemed. So I'm sure, man, she didn't really want to be around people, didn't want to be around crowds family, friends, probably lost a lot of them. But what she did have that many of us don't have is faith. She never stopped having faith. And that's an unwavering confidence in someone or something. Man, you got to have that in your higher self. You got to have that in yourself, that unwavering confidence that there's something higher than this flesh or something greater and I can reach a greater level. I could become whole. You got to believe that. So as the story goes, Jesus was in town and actually Jesus was headed to someone's home to heal a young girl. And on the, his way there, she saw him. And remembering the story she had heard about him, his healing powers, she said to herself, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. So she made her way to the back of him. She touched his garment from behind and she said instantly she was healed. She could feel the blood stop flowing. The vessel was mended. No blood was flowing. Immediately Jesus says, who touched me? Who touched my garment? And the disciples said, well, that could be anyone. I'm paraphrasing. That could be anyone. There's all these people around. But he said, no, no. You know, basically, this was a special touch. This was an anointing touch. And so he finally located her. And she revealed what she had been through. She told her story, how she had paid a lot of money to fix her affliction, how she had seen a lot of doctors over the 12 years, but to no avail. And she was thanking him. She was thanking him for healing her. And he said, no, your faith healed you. See, Jesus is a representation of our higher self. I know we want to say Jesus is someone outside of us, but I see Jesus as a representation of our higher self, man, that crown. And when we can merge that crown, that higher self with our carnal self, where they're in one accord, man, that's truly heaven. That's truly heaven. We can make that connection. But what's crazy, man, they're born connected, but somewhere along the line in this world, we disconnect. We disconnect from our higher self, and we have to relearn who we are. We have to remember who we are. Man, the scripture says that God says, uh, in the word of Jesus, whoever acknowledges me, before men, I will acknowledge them. Whoever disowns me in front of men, I will disown them. That's what happened with this young lady, man. The lady with the 12 years issue of blood. She acknowledged her higher self. Jesus is her higher self. And he acknowledged her. She was healed. Man, we got to start acknowledging our higher selves. We got to start acknowledging each other. And life will change. You disown me, you know what I'm saying? You don't act like I'm great in front of men. I'll disown you. You'll disown yourself from your higher self and vice versa, man. I got to acknowledge you. I got to acknowledge your greatness. I got to be humble and acknowledge your greatness because you are a reflection of me. How I think about me is how I'm going to treat you.
no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Man, as you go on in that story, in that chapter, you see that eventually Jesus is crucified. And unlike the woman with the 12 issues, 12 years issue of blood, she felt touching his garment could heal her. Well, when he was on the cross, there were men gambling for his garment. They didn't even see the value. They didn't know who he was. They didn't know he was a representation of them. He was a reflection of them. The higher self disowned them because they disowned the higher self amongst men. And so this is why Jesus said, you know, Father, forgive them for they not know not what they do. Just ignorant. A lot of us are walking around ignorant, not acknowledging, not seeing what's before us, man. They don't even see the blessing. They're living on a superficial level, gambling for clothes. Where this other woman felt like she could be healed by just touching the clothes. She was unassuming. She came from behind. She just needed to touch it, man. That's faith. We all need to have that type of faith. That unwavering confidence merged the two, man, the subconscious with the conscious, the higher self with the carnal, and let's go to the next level. Man, I got it. I got the faith. Do you got it? As always, toasters, from me to you, love, peace.